how many in here have seen the movie that's out, Jesus Revolution? Okay. A few of you, not all of you. Listen, let me just say, I, I encourage you to go see it. Um, I, I'll tell you, it's, it's a great movie. It's a true story, obviously. It's also so well done. So well done. Um, you know, there's a lot of Christian flicks and things out there that you watch, and they're just so corny, aren't they? You're just like, ah. You kind of cringe sometimes. You watch a lot of stuff about who made it and how it all came about and everything, and, you know, they didn't know that revival was going to be kind of breaking out when this thing was going to be released, you know. They set release dates months ahead, you know. God knows exactly what he's doing, right? And so, again, I can't talk enough about it. I'm sure we'll go see it again. You need to go, all right? So go see it. Um, back in the late 80s, there was a uh, pretty popular song. Some of you will know it. Uh, some of you, you won't. But uh, you all know the song, I Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For. All right, who sang that song? You too. You too. All right, yep. Uh, Bono. Uh, no relation to Sonny and Cher Bono. Oh. All right, it's Bono. Um, this is what was written about that song. I found this kind of interesting. This kind of all ties in here, so bear with me. You know, I always start sermons off a little weird, right? But it all gets there. Um, Bono, at the time of the song, wrote this. He said, it's an anthem of doubt more than faith. And then there was a writer for The New Yorker that said this. It's a song about searching for meaning or transcendence. The most interesting thing about it is that you don't find it. It's about the search. And then Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote this. He said, life's a journey, not a destination. Mm -hmm. Well, here's my take on it. Uh, your life is a journey, but it's headed for a destination. Mm -hmm. So you better make sure that that journey of your life you live out, that you're going to the right destination, mm -hmm. right? We want to all know that, well, I, I'm jumping ahead in my message, but look, I got better things to do on Sunday morning than be here with you if this is a waste of our time, right? And so do you, right? Some of you would be in Florida, Colorado, somewhere sunny. Listen, when you find Jesus, you'll stop searching. When you find Jesus, you'll 11, verse 2. John the Baptist, who was in prison, heard about all the things the Messiah was doing. So he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, Are you the Messiah we've been expecting, or should we look, keep looking for someone else? Jesus told him, Go back and tell, uh, go back to John and tell him, Listen to this, it won't be up here. This is scripture here. It says, They were righteous in God's eyes, careful to obey all the Lord's commandments and regulations. That's pretty high praise written about somebody, isn't it? If you and I, if that could be etched on our tombstone, you and I, would be we feel like it went okay with us, right? But that's said of them, and it's also said she couldn't have a child. The point there is you can do everything right and experience trials. You can be doing everything you're supposed to be doing and still experience trials stuff. That's this life, right? You and I aren't yet to the next life. We're in this one right now. Zachariah, Elizabeth, they always won that child. One day, Zachariah, he's, again, he's in the temple performing the duties, his priestly duties, and an angel appears before him and says, hey, your prayer's been heard. You're going to have a son. You're going to name him John. They did have a son.
the Holy Spirit even before his birth. He will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the God. Now, you know, Jesus was, uh, or John was Jesus' cousin. Um, he... Uh, John was six months older than Jesus. Remember, Mary went to go visit her cousin Elizabeth, right? That was kind of a confirmation that what the angel had spoken to Mary was also true. And if you remember, when Mary arrives pregnant with Jesus, the baby John leapt, jumped, was dancing in the womb of Elizabeth. That's why we know he wasn't an actual Baptist, because he was dancing. <laughs> <laughs> I have that background. I can make all those Baptist jokes. Believe me, I got a bunch of them. <laughs> There's a reason why I can't dance. <laughs> it's probably coordination, but it's probably a lot because of a lot of other things. <laughs> Listen, John was planned by God, purposed by God, brought on the scene by God at just the right time to prepare the way for Jesus' coming. Jesus said this of John, I tell you the truth, all who have ever lived, none is greater than John the Baptist. That's pretty high praise. In our text, John the Baptist, the greatest human to have ever lived, the one preparing the way, Jesus coming, the Messiah, the King, finds himself in prison. Now, it's kind of weird why John's in prison. The ruler of that area, had uh, Herod, he had taken his brother's wife to be his wife. He divorced his wife and took Philip's wife to be his wife. Well, you're not supposed to do that, people. That's... Not good in any day and age. It's a sin in Leviticus. The Bible says do not have sexual relations with your brother's wife. This would violate your brother. Now, interesting. Jesus was? That's an interesting question and thought. Now listen, I'll tell you just my belief theory. I really think John's question was coming from the circumstance he found himself in too. Again, he's in jail. I think his question came from discouragement and I think John's question also came about because he wasn't understanding Jesus' working, way of working. Everything that was happening to John, I think, was confusing, uh, frustrating. He thought when the Messiah comes, of whom all my life has been geared to prepare his way, he's going to take the throne, right? He's going to take over. We've got Roman oppression going on. We've got all this religion and ritual and law. We've got all this stuff going on. When Jesus comes, the Messiah is going to take the throne, and he's, it's all going to then work out. That's what's been promised to us. Isaiah 35, 4. Look at this verse. This is Old Testament prophecy about the Messiah's coming. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong. Do not fear, for your God's coming to destroy your enemies. He's coming to save you. You think John felt that in his prison cell? I mean, has he sat there? Do you think he, for speaking out because the ruler had taken his brother's wife to be his? you think he thought, I don't see my end. Engaged in what Jesus is doing, nor in the way that it's falling out and working. It just doesn't make sense. 
You can understand his frustration, discouragement. Go ask Jesus, is he the one? Or are you just wasting our time? I love John here because none of you, you know, I don't like our time wasted. Right? Nobody likes their time wasted. What I love here about John is John wanted the truth. He's desperate for the truth. I love the fact that he's so devoted to finding the truth. And look, he doesn't even care what the response is from Jesus. It's like, look, don't waste my time. I want the truth. And, you know, is it you or do I need? doesn't leave you empty. Jesus leaves you full. It doesn't mean when you find Jesus you won't experience things. Trials. Questions. Doubt. I'm not going to tell you it's all going to be rosy and easy. God never promises us any of that. But he promises that he'll give us life. Right? And a full life. Overflowing abundant life. All those things we've been talking about the last few weeks. Look again back at Matthew 11, 4 and 5. Jesus told them, again this is John's disciples, to go back and tell John who's locked away in the Black Fortress dungeon prison, go back to John and tell him what you've heard and seen. The blind see, the lame walk, those with leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised to life, and the good news is being preached to the poor. Now remember the verse I told you in the Old Testament that prophesied. We just read it, Isaiah 35, 4. Bring that verse back up here, Parker. Isaiah 35, 4. Say to those with fearful hearts, be strong, do not fear. Your God's coming to destroy your enemies. He's coming to save you. Again, it all sounds great, except, again, John doesn't feel like that's happening to him. <laughs> well, I didn't read you the following two verses. We'll read them now, verse 5 and 6 of Isaiah 35. The passage goes on to say, When he comes, he will open the eyes of the blind and unplug the ears of the deaf. The lame will leap like a deer, and those who cannot speak will sing for joy. Springs will gush forth in the wilderness, and streams will water in the wasteland. Listen, when John's disciples returned and told him the words of Jesus in answer to his question, I truly believe any doubt John had turned to faith. Because it all goes back, we talked about last week, remember, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of the Lord. Right? Listen, again, I got pictured in my mind that John in that prison cell before John's disciples came back to him with the response, just so serious with his question and the quest and the search for what's the truth? What's the truth here, right? Mm -hmm. And he gets that answer and back, and I think his countenance completely changed, and there was renewed faith and confidence, smile on his face, joy in his heart. He's the one! I haven't wasted my time. He's everything he said he was. He's everything they said he would be. He's even more. What's that life application for you and I? What did what John go through? What can you and I take from that? Listen, if the greatest who ever lived, at times just is like, oh my word, it just almost seems way out there at times. I heard this is a, uh, you may hear this come up again. I was watching something uh, to do with Greg Laurie last night. Greg Laurie is one of the, the Jesus Revolution movies. Part of it's based on his life. It's actually kind of told from his perspective. So incredible man of God and how God's used him. And I don't need to get into all that. But he was making a point. Um, uh, it, actually, he was preaching at Los Angeles Stadium in front of thousands, which if you see the movie, that'll make sense. But... Um, he made the statement, he said, you know, we wouldn't even know about heaven if Jesus, God through his word, didn't reveal it to us. <clears throat> I mean, think about that. Some of the very things you at times may get discouraged or question, you wouldn't even know anything about it had God not told you. And he was using it in an instance, isn't it crazy that people don't believe in God? <clears throat> You wouldn't even know what you don't believe unless he told you about it. <laughs> Isn't 
Is all that I'm going through worth it? Is Jesus worth it? You might find yourself at times asking the same kind of questions. The greatest that ever lived asked, thought, you might too. Let me tell you this to encourage you. Don't entertain those thoughts. And when I say don't entertain, what I mean is do what John did. Settle. Mm -hmm. When you have doubt and discouragement, you've got to settle it. Mm -hmm. You've got to settle it, and you settle that by God's word. Right. Don't ever let doubt go and settle. I've shared part of my testimony with you many times. I'll give you the brief version. There was a time, me and Rebecca, we were serving in a little church in Republic, Missouri, and I was the kind of youth pastor, associate pastor at the time, and um, I went to my pastor early. I, it was one day during the week. It was early before work, and I, uh, I had the day off that day. If I'm not, I know I had the day off. And I told him, I said, Pastor, I said, look, I'm just, I'm having some doubts. I said, I'm struggling with my salvation. I know I've accepted Christ, and I've done it a bunch of times since then. <laughs> and I said, I just, I just need help. And man, his eyes were like so big. I said, I am in the Father, and the Father's in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Isn't that what Jesus did with John? John, look, okay, you got some doubts and questions? Have I done what was said of me? Lame walk, blind see, deaf hear, people raised to life. What, what more do you want, John? What more do you want? I've done everything that Scripture's been talked about me. You've seen it? I'm going to do it right here with your disciples when they go back and tell you. Listen, you and I, however, we don't have Jesus physically here among us. We have the Holy Spirit here with us. We're promised that in Scripture, right? Two or three gathered together. Yep. Here I'm in the midst. We have the Holy Spirit, those of us that are saved, living within us. But just Jesus in physical house. But don't dwell on that. Don't live that way. Settle it. Settle it. Verse 6, Jesus added, and he added, Matthew eleven six, 6, and he added, God blesses those who do not fall away because of me. Other translations say offended by me. Listen, when you're desperate, defeated, or discouraged, when you doubt, don't fall away. Believe his word, believe his works. Because that's what's going to happen when these things come. That's Satan working. Satan's working to wedge and separate, to destroy, right? Right? Elsewhere in Scripture, again, just let me throw this one other one in here. Matthew 16. <laughs> and Jesus said, You're blessed, Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Listen, it tells us a bunch of stuff there. It tells us, number one, it matters what you believe. Mm -hmm. It matters what you believe about him. And you can't learn him from someone. You must learn him from him. So what he reveals to you, his word, you have to believe. You have to believe. It's the only way you defeat, defeat, discouragement and doubt and all that kind of stuff is I believe what he says. Jesus will reveal himself to you as you Believe. You'll either trust him or you'll fall away. You'll either trust him or you'll fall away. You'll either trust him or you'll fall away. That's the way it goes, people. Even in good churches with good people, mm -hmm. you'll either trust him or you'll fall away. You don't want to fall away. You got to trust him. I ask you to bow your head. I don't know what your week's been like. That wall of doubt. If he can make you question everything, if he can make you question who Jesus is, he believes he'll win. Even though the victory's been won. He knows his destination and he wants to take anybody with him he can. But listen, God knows the purpose and plan he has for you, right? God knows the destination he's preparing for all those that are his, for all those that believe him.
for all of those that are trusting. When you have questions, take it to Jesus. Trust what he says. Settle those questions. Settle the doubt. Settle the discouragement. Trust him. Father, as we come before you, God, I pray. to what you're speaking to them. 